You're looking at a monster tornado barreling toward the city of Rolling Fork, Mississippi this past March. A storm chaser driving through town blares his horn. He's trying to alert locals who seem unaware of what's coming because the county's outdoor emergency sirens are not going off. These people have got have no freaking idea. You could feel the house shaking, the noise, the splintering wood and trees falling and breaking glass. It was intense, let's just say that. About one month after that harrowing night, we met Tommy Hengst at what's left of his house. Pam and I were right here. He showed us the utility room where he and his wife Pam raced for cover with just seconds to spare could not have been more than a minute. Pam had gotten a pillow and had it over her head. I was holding her. The roof started coming off as we could hear the storm moving away. I said, I don't know what we've got left, but we're okay. It's horrible, like. Christopher Jennings was driving home when the tornado hit. Where we're standing, was this the front yard? Yes, sir. He lived in this mobile home park located within sight of one of Rolling Fork's two outdoor emergency sirens. Three of his neighbors, who he said were like family to him, were among the 13 here who did not survive. Did they have any warning that the tornado was coming? No, sir. No, sir. The, the warning will cross the street and they'll go off. Oh my God. Sirens have been used since the 1970s in towns across America to warn about imminent danger from bad weather. They're designed to only warn people who are outside, but even with alerts on cell phones, TV, and radio these days, sirens are still considered critical, especially in low-income and rural areas where good cell signals and phones may be in short supply. But our Scripps News investigation found many of the sirens in this country are outdated or no longer working. A lot of sirens are actually repurposed from the Cold War. You might be out playing at home when the warning comes. Originally designed to warn of an enemy attack. In Rolling Fork, we learned how their decades-old system failed when this town needed it most. Unlike many other towns where sirens go off automatically right after a tornado warning, the setup in Rolling Fork is so old it requires dispatchers to activate the system manually. The dispatcher on duty that night wasn't sure she knew how to do that, so she called her boss, Angela Jenkins, the county's head emergency dispatcher. She believes at least one siren eventually sounded. I heard the siren go off. And how much longer did it take until the tornado then hit? It was so face it was almost like within the next breath that was at 803 p.m when the tornado roared into rolling fork 10 precious minutes after the first tornado warning from the national weather service at 753 when the sirens should have gone off is it possible that by the time the siren sounded it was too late for a lot of people to take cover yeah it's possible there are tens of thousands of outdoor warning sirens across the U.S., but our Scripps News investigation found there are no national standards that dictate how they should be used, maintained, and tested. Since 2019, we found 24 incidents when sirens failed during testing, or worse, when severe weather hit. Five of those failures happened just this year. The tornado has just gone all the way to the ground now. It's One of those failures occurred here in Hennessy, Oklahoma, a town in the bullseye of tornadoes. How real is the threat of tornadoes in Hennessy? I think it's as about as real as it gets. Bert Greitz has been part of the leadership of this community for decades. And he had this disturbing news to share at a town hall earlier this year. We tested the storm siren system. Not one siren in this town worked. Holy cow. All of them were down. This looks very old. Time has caught up with Hennessy's outdoor alarms. This one still marked with a civil defense decal. The original copper wiring is no longer compatible with the modern phone lines necessary to activate the sirens. How old is the siren that we're looking at? That was put in in about 1973. Greitz took us to see how they've managed to attach a switch to the guts of this half-century-old siren 
bypassing those copper wires. This is your temporary fix. This is our temporary fix. So that An app now triggers the alarm. Well, should we go for it? Sure. The sirens blare at about 130 decibels. That's roughly equivalent to a jet engine at takeoff. How did that sound to you today? Sounds good. Working perfectly. It'll take a year before parts arrive for permanent upgraded sirens at a cost of $171,000. That's a lot of money for a system you might think the modern world has passed by. Do we even need sirens anymore? Well, I think sirens probably played a larger role 60 years ago than they do today. The cell towers go down during a tornado event or a severe thunderstorm. So I do feel like the new system is very important. This was our living room. We spent the night right here. Back in Rolling Fork, we were with Tommy Hanks as he prepared to tear down what was left of his home of 29 years. He told us he knows sirens save lives, but he doesn't spend too much time looking backward. Sirens are a good thing. A very, very wise man once told me, the most useless real estate in the world is the runway behind you. You gotta step into the future. Head dispatcher Angela Jenkins, who also lost her home that night, told us that future for Rolling Fork now includes a plan for more sirens and new technology that will automatically activate them as soon as the National Weather Service issues a tornado warning. Can I ask you a hard question? Do you feel like some of the deaths here could have been prevented if the siren had gone off earlier? I don't know, but I can say these. The weight of the word was on my shoulder. So I can guarantee you we're taking all in the extra measures to make sure that we learn from this experience. If we could have done anything to save everybody, I promise you we would have saved everybody. Some good news now for Rolling Fork. Shortly after we were there, a group of siren experts from across the country volunteered to go there. They took a look at that one siren that we showed you that was by the mobile home park. They said almost certainly it was not working the night of the storm. They fixed that siren, they installed a brand new one, and they fixed that activation keypad at the sheriff's office that was so troubling and so old. That now works just fine. A better system, but not the best system yet, Lauren.